All right, this week on Real South Hunting, you ain't gonna see a lot out of me, but I can promise you one thing. My bestest buddies, Brooke, Joe, and John. Things are heating up, bucks is hitting the ground. What a fine episode. Y'all sit back and watch this. You mean I gotta talk? <laughs> I was just gonna smile a little bit. Headed to Arkansas. Back up there to hunt with old Joe. Man, this is gonna be a really good time to be up here because the rut has kicked off. And uh, Joe's been hunting the last couple of days seeing lots of bucks chasing and all kind of stuff. So it's about to be on. All right, I'm gonna make a solo trip back up to Arkansas. Stubbs has got another hunt going on, so. I'm going back up there by myself. Well, that Saturday evening I got on the road and made it in Saturday night to Joe's and we started talking about where we're gonna hunt. So I went back to a familiar stand that I started out on the last hunt. Yeah. Bip, bip, bip. I'm telling you what, I had a, a big old eight point come running off the hill. I mean, he was hassling, he was breathing hard, and I did everything I could do to get him to stop, but he just wouldn't. Now I got my bow, so, you know, he's, he ran through it about 10 yards, and I did everything I could to stop him, but he had a pack of dogs on his heels, and uh, he hit the next county, I think. So the next day I changed stands and I was hunting a ladder stand on the lease, looking over this ditch that went up to a pasture. I saw a doe come out, or two does come out. All of a sudden this buck runs up and starts chasing the doe around. and I'm trying to find the opening to get a shot, and it just never works out. I bet that buck stayed around probably 10 minutes, uh, just bumping this doe around. <clears throat> Finally goes up in the pasture and takes off, and heads into the woods. So that was the end of that hunt. Here we go, it's probably gonna be my last morning to hunt. I gotta get back home. Got some things to do, so gotta make it happen. So the next morning I make my way back up up to the top of the hill, the hill stand that we call. This is close to the area where I shot the 10 point earlier in the year. And uh, I'm sitting there and a couple does start coming through. I'm just sitting there, never hear a deer come in. I look up and there's a buck standing there. He's kind of nervous acting. He won't come out into the lane. He goes back and comes back towards the lane. And finally, he walks out into the opening where I can get a shot.
eight point two of the game picture so all the way back to the in the bathroom is game picture. Alright, well I'm fixing to head back to the truck. Wait on Joe to get here, help me do the recovery, and uh get this bad boy loaded up. I got some help now. Big Joe's here to help. Muscles. Drag this old bus out. My boy Brooke has struck again. No, I didn't expect you to be here that quick. I guess so. I was probably all excited. Brooke could get another one. Now, if y'all remember back in a previous episode when I shot the 10 point and we're talking about going down this huge hill, you're fixing to see what we're talking about. There ain't nothing wrong with that deer. All right. Tagged out here in Arkansas about 9.30. This old eight point stepped out. Got the camera on him and took the shot. And he didn't go anywhere. Just an awesome time up here hunting with our buddy Joe in Arkansas. Filling tags. Now it's time to go back to Mississippi. Man, I can't thank Joe enough for all that he's done for us this year, getting us ready to hunt. Uh, he put us on good deer, and man, I can't wait till next year to see what it's gonna hold. I've got Brooke and Stubbs somewhat uh, satisfied, I guess. Brooke has just been mowing the deer down, and poor Stubbs, we can't put him in a petting zoo and, and get on the deer. Really not seen anything myself. I, I also have my dad that I've been trying to get deer on, and he's been successful so far, and, there's a deer that we kept periodically getting pictures of, and he, he wasn't a big deer, wasn't a very old deer, but he had a split G2. And even though he's probably not just, I mean, he's not gonna break any records, if I can find this deer, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a shot at him. Let's go see how bad I missed. I'm pretty sure I missed. It's pretty thick where I shot it. Well, the video's not gonna be good, but I did hit the deer. Here's quit bleeding. I found a little spot of blood. Hold on. Keep looking. Oh, there's some blood right there. 
he is right there. It's like he's dead. I wish the footage would have been better. It started busting me. I think this is the deer. He's the one I think he is. Yep. I've seen this deer. Nothing wrong with that shot. Could have shot him with a bow. Pass him up for my dad to shoot him. My dad hadn't seen him. He ain't that big of a deer. But what's cool about him is this right here. So I finally, finally get a deer on the ground. Uh, the split G2 buck shows up uh, just you know, even though this deer is not uh, just going to break any scoring books or anything, it's a really awesome deer for me. Uh, the fact that I killed this deer out of the stand that me and my dad hung, uh, getting to hunt together again for another year. Uh, been an awesome year with Stubbs and Brooks so far, and, you know, and just, it's been a challenging year just trying to find deer, for, get everyone on deer and just, you know, but to be able to put my hands on this deer, it just was the icing on the cake. So this hunt takes place on December the 24th, which would be Christmas Eve and early morning, right at daylight, self-filming up in the stand. Just got the camera on, everything going. We just shot a Mississippi buck, December the 24th. Right here the day before Jesus' birthday. Had a day off. Man, that's exciting. Get to finally get a shot. Haven't fired a shot all season. Finally got a shot at one. Thank the Lord, give God the praise. We're gonna go check him out. Yeah, instead of a blood trail, it was kind of a dew trail that morning. It was a heavy dew, and you can see right where the deer run in the woods uh, without the blood. And, Shot the deer with 6.5 PRC, and uh, I mean, it gave it a, a lick, but there was not a lot of blood to be found. But uh, once we got inside the woods uh, and found which way it went, it was kind of easy to track up. When I got to the deer, I realized he was a lot bigger than, than most normal deer here in South Mississippi, but we put him on the scales and he weighed 202 pounds, I believe, and uh, as a direct result of the supplemental feeding and the minerals that we've been putting out over the years, and like I said, we knew the history of this deer, had some sheds from it that we had picked up and then had the covert cameras going, uh, so we knew who he was, but just to, to reiterate one more time, if you feed these deer and take care of your deer herd here, you can get some body weight in excess of 200 pounds here in South Mississippi. Back in Mississippi, back at the camp, the rut is just kicking off. I lay down that night, go to sleep, wake up, alarm wakes me up the next morning. I immediately start looking at the covert app, seeing what moved through the night, early morning. And uh, at one of our stands, I had this buck that showed up. And he's been in there a good bit that night. Said I've been a buck blind, looking over a buck buster's team, food blood. Fed a couple of uh, days now where it's been down in the low 30s. This blood's turned sweet. 
Uh, I sit to probably 10, 10.30, don't see a deer. Get down, go back to the camp. I think I went and filled a feeder up. And then all of a sudden I start getting pictures of a buck, this buck chasing the door around the plot that I was just in. I made a plan, I'm gonna sit here until the buck comes back out or until it gets dark. Well, I've been sitting there and I think it was probably about two o'clock, I hear limbs breaking, a buck grunting, a buck just rubbing on a tree. And uh, it's off to my left and it's it's like really thick out through there. I can't, can't see anything. See if I can find some blood right here. Looked like a good hit. I reviewed the footage. He shouldn't be far. See a trail and a little few specks right there where it's coming into the plot. So. On continuing down this trail, he shouldn't be far. Yeah. Yeah, could be. Get Mr. Wayne from the camp to come run the camera for me while uh, I go to look for this deer, and it's in a thicket. I mean, this deer went in the thickest spot around there. All right. Here. Yeah. All in the pile of bushes, isn't it? Patience sitting there all afternoon paid off, didn't he? Yeah. You're tougher than I am. <laughs> I know my rear end sore. Oh, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. Just a fine deer here in South Mississippi at our home camp. Man, it's, this year just can't get any better for me.
All right, now all I got to do is open and close this episode, but I got a part in it anyway. Y'all don't want to miss the show next week because these younger boys are going to get it done. All right, here we go again. This is day 417. Nah, just kidding. This is day... It's day four? Good grief. <laughs> I ain't never seen nothing like it come off that mountain. It was like... I couldn't stop. I got drawed on him, but he wouldn't stop. I was... Yeah. Uh, the old JR slept in that morning. And, uh, <laughs> JR messed that up, didn't he? <laughs> Intentionally. Intentionally. Throw it off on him. Part over. All right. Too much crap going on with that self filming, but I love it. I guess I hit the deer, though. <laughs>